Studneck Aquatics here. I have not done a cigar lounge tour for quite a while. And if you're new to the channel, this is my little cigar lounge that I put in. It is, it, it was intended to be a bedroom when I put this new house in. It's about, I don't know, 10 foot this way by maybe 12 this way. It's not a very big room. It is nice that I do have a window in here and it's wonderful. I put these French doors in. My backyard is right back there. And by having them French doors there, you can you can see into the backyard. You can walk out on the back deck and have a cigar. Um, it's really good for venting air in the room. You can open them French doors up and just exchange the air immediately. So it really, really works out well. It doesn't take a big room in order to come up with a cigar lounge. And one thing I do want to point out, the way I do this, my house does not smell like a cigar. Believe me, if my sister, if she walked in my house and smelled like a cigar, she probably, you know, would make sure I knew about it. So anyway, it does not smell like a cigar. It does not smell stale. It does not smell like anything bad. So it is working the way I'm doing it. This room had carpet, <clears throat> just like this one did. And I went ahead and put in this laminate flooring. I like the gray. It turned out really, really well. Uh, my daughter picked out, I'm kind of going for a Victorian feel in here, kind of like a Victorian smoking room type of thing, which is actually what I prefer to call it. And this rug really goes a long ways towards helping that. I did go ahead and do the mahogany trim, which really turned out nice. If you go onto this wall, this is where you come in. And then we have a uh, little table and chairs. And this is this is real leather on top of this. I picked this up at an antique store and the chairs at the same time. And they really, really go nice with the, with the Victorian feel. Also, the little light goes nice too. Um, I have my ashtray, I use cigar cutter, I light every match with every cigar I smoke, I light with a wooden match. And this is pipe tobacco in here, there's a few pipes, I do smoke a pipe once in a while, so that's my, my travel carry thing for my pipe. Oh, this is my bottle opener for opening a beer on the wall there. And up on this shelf, I did, I did paint these two shelves, I picked them up used, painted them that mahogany color, they work out really good. Up here, I have an article that was in the paper about me at my job, and that's what this one here is too. These here are pipe tobaccos. Frog Morton on the Town, uh, Captain Cool, Porter's Pride, Prince Albert, Sharpshooter, Coyote, Hell's Gate, and Three Cherry. Those are just some of them that I do have. And also up here, oh, just a few field guides and stuff, I have Officer's Club, Nightcap, Early Morning Pipe, Aaron Moore Flake, and Four Square Aromatics. So anyway, I do have those. Uh, the old velvet tins, you come across those. This is an old cigar press, which is really cool. It's just a neat, neat thing. And my daughter found this picture. This was World War II. The uh, Dunbill Pipe Tobacco building was bombed, and it pretty much pretty close to being completely destroyed. But rather than give up and go home, they sat out in front with little tables and sold pipe tobaccos and pipe to the soldiers. So that is cool. It's like never give up. So anyway, I have a couple of service awards, one for 25 years and one for uh, 30 years at my job. Uh, diploma from University of Nebraska-Lincoln, a citation of achievement award there. My daughter picked out this curtain and I really like it. It's, it's let me close this down. It's so bright right now. And the black curtain really goes well and ties in nice, I think. Uh, this wall over here, of course, I have my French doors. Uh, another shelf up top where I just put old used, you know, empty uh, cigar boxes and liquor cabinet down here with mostly bourbons, but there's a few other things. I do appreciate a good bourbon and a plant. Um, just some Sir Walter Raleigh tins. This is the oldest one with the metal with the, with the lid. And this is the middle and this is the newest and the newest does have pipe tobacco in it. Um, this little ashtray I, it was my grandmother's and it has a picture of this old gentleman with his hand around that lady's back and when you look at the back he's got his hand up her dress so that was my grandma's that's pretty cool uh i picked this up this is for wooden matches used to be able to strike on top it's a little tough to do now and anyway just a few things here i've got some service award mugs some pictures flask uh, i did build this and threw them in there and then i ran out of room and started filling this and this and that and i smoke a lot of cigars so anyway an old velvet tin and when you come across over to this wall here, basically what I have on this wall is my granddad gave me this little set of horns. I have no idea what they're from, but they're just kind of cool. I really think heirlooms are important. I do have feet problems. I've had nine foot surgeries in my life. I'm supposed to have another one. They postponed it because of the coronavirus. Anyway, I have really bad feet, so I do walk with a cane. I have my cap, uh, tripod for making videos. 
I did put this air purification system in here by Conway. It works very, very well. It actually purifies the entire upstairs. If we cook bacon in the kitchen, it gets rid of the smell. It just, it just does a wonderful, wonderful job is what it does. And this picture here, it's kind of noisy, so I'll turn it off for now. So anyway, this picture here is pretty cool. Reynold Brown, if you look into him, he painted Ben-Hur, The Ten Commandments, a wonderful artist, and he actually moved to my part of the country to retire. Um, he was an amazing artist and he had a stroke and he did this with the wrong hand. So that man was an artist and his stuff is worth a lot of money. This is probably worth a ton because I had him sign it, but I don't care what it's worth. It's just kind of a neat, neat picture. Um, his wife said that she would wake up at night after he had a stroke and go downstairs and he would be sitting down there at his drawing table with a pencil rubber band to his hand that was bad because he had a stroke trying to, trying to draw. And so it's just, yeah, I did art shows for years and it really means a lot to me. And this here is kind of my pride and joy of my room. This was a closet that comes off of my cigar lounge. Oh, my little camel sign. I know it's cigarettes, but it is authentic and it is old. And anyway, I went ahead and converted this. This had a solid door on it, similar to this one here. I converted this into a walk-in humidor. It is a closet. It is six foot across. It is about, oh, two and a half to three foot front to back. And it does have vaulted ceilings, just like my room does here. And it, it turned out really, really well. I need to do a new tour in here. I did a nine part series on how I built this. It really did not end up costing me that much money. I had quite a few people that said, oh, that's not gonna work, you did it wrong. Well, they're wrong because I've had it for over two years and my cigars are in perfect condition. Um, it just works very, very well. It is, a, it is something that I wish more and more people would do. And as you can see, I have four shelves on this end. I have four here. I did taper the shelves recently and then my bundle rack up top. Actually, this down here, these trays are removable. These are singles. And then I have four more shelves on this end. And as I said, it does have vaulted ceilings in there. Here is my humidification system here that I actually went to Staybell and Associates and they actually uh, design walking humidors for, for commercial businesses and stuff. And they worked with me on what to get in here. And here is the readout. It is now 71.6 degrees and... Uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity is at 71. So there's a lot of humidity in the air today. Uh, this hasn't even ran, but I've never had a problem with mold. I try to keep it at 69, 69. So anyway, it works very, very well. I do need to do another tour of this thing. I do enjoy cigars, as you can see. And when I do something, I tend to maybe overdo it. So anyway, that is a tour of my little cigar lounge. And make sure that everybody stays safe and healthy with you during this coronavirus thing. And as always, keep smoking cigars.